Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity where we can come together to discuss the topic of rest. May it be enlightening and informative to us. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our topic of discussion is on rest. Proverbs chapter 26 verse 2 part B tells us that the curse cause less shall not come. The curse upon the body of information, of disease, of, um, you know, pulmonary diseases, cancer, those things shall not come without a cause. Those will not come to us cause less. And in the book Ministry of Healing, we are told that disease never comes without a cause. Disease never comes without a cause. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from the violation of the laws of health. And what are the laws of health? They are pure air, sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power. These are the true remedies. Find rest of Spirit in the beauty and quietude and peace of nature. Let the eye rest on the green fields, the groves, and the hills. When you're out in nature and you can observe the greenery, the blue skies, the clouds that are drifting by, the cool air, it is so rejuvenating to the body it gives a peaceful, restful feeling to the body. On the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he did what? He rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God rested, sorry, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made, Genesis 2, verses 2 and 3. It is in resting in God that we find physical rest. My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. So in order to find physical rest, freedom, uh, and um, you know, not to be fatigued, resting in God, we will find that ultimate rest. For he spake in a certain place on the seventh day in this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day. Not just any day, but a certain day, saying in David, today enter, sorry, after so long a time as it is said, today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart. For if Jesus had given them rest, then they would be, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Therefore, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God, for he that is entered into his rest, he also had ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 4 to 11 talks about the rest that Christ um, spoke about a particular day, not any other day, and uh, we are invited to enter into that rest. Those who make a great exertions to accomplish just so much work in a given time and continue to labor when the judgment tells them they should rest and never gain it. They are living on borrowed capital. They are expending the vital force which they need at a future time, and when the energy have so recklessly used is demanded, they fail for want of it. I've been shown that those who do this often lose much more than they gain. 
or the energies are exhausted and they labor on nervous excitement. They may not realize any immediate injury, but they are surely undermining their constitution. Helpful Living, page 47. So when you exert your work and you tax your body so much, um, you know, you're running on this nervous excitement, on adrenaline. But soon enough, your body will, you know, it will take a hold on you and you can fall grossly sick. So there are physical effects from the lack of proper rest. One is that it lowers your immune system. So if you're catching the cold all the time, you know, check the time in which you go to bed. You're not getting adequate rest. Lack of concentration, quick temper, you're irritated, agitated. There is impatience, impaired cognitive performance. Individuals who complain about not being able to retain memory loss, look at the time in which you're going to sleep. Fatigue, that you're fatigued all the time. One of the factors, check your rest time. Shift workers. Uh, melatonin hormone is released between the hours of 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. when the body is at rest, not when the body is awake. Melatonin is the body's natural antioxidant and also a tumor suppressant. There are studies done in Denmark and the U.S. that show that for females, Lack of melatonin increases breast cancer by 50 to 55 percent and colon cancer by 45 to 50 percent. And for men, prostate cancer is increased by 45 to 50 percent as well as for colon cancer in the same value, 45 to 50 percent. Now, we, sunlight. Sunlight helps to reset the body's biorhythm. When the sunlight goes through the iris to the pineal gland, it helps to reset the body's biological clock. You have hormones, um, the body rhythm, and patterns are then balanced and set in place. So it is important to get adequate amount of, amount of sunlight so that your body's biorhythm is set in motion. It, um, it, you know, different things can happen at the same time in terms of your hormones and the interplay with functions in the body. And, um, and rest being one of those factors and benefits from getting adequate sunlight. Now, melatonin produces this hormone, melatonin. It gives restful sleep. Note that if you eat after 6.30 p.m., the production of melatonin is stopped in the gut. So your, your gut, your small intestine to produce melatonin, a hormone, gets into the blood. It helps you to feel drowsy. You know, your body starts to, um, your, your temperature starts to cool down and you're getting into the sleepy mode. It's because of an increase in melatonin in the body. In the morning at daybreak, you have serotonin increases and it is high and melatonin would be on the low. Now, our serotonin keep us awake and alert and it's important for serotonin to be high in the morning and melatonin rest, sleep, low. So our body temperature, as they begin to break, you know, like um, where I'm at, uh, there are um, some chickens. And the chickens actually uh, start to crow before any deep break can take place. And these, these chickens would sort of wake, they are awake and they wake up the community um, with, with their crowing. But before there's any light upon the earth, these chickens know that dawn is coming. And the same way to our bodies would be alert and start recognizing that. And so our body temperature begins to rise. Uh, you start turning and tossing in your bed. You soon would be up and awake and wake up um, as the light comes upon the earth, daybreak. So um, 
in the evening you find that melatonin is peaked up, serotonin goes low, that alertness goes down low, and the body temperature starts to drop, it reduces, and it begins to tone down when it gets dark. And looking at chickens again and birds, you find that they would be out and about during the day in the fields, looking for food, building nests, doing all kinds of labor. Um, but as evening sets in, they would actually go onto their trees to look for rest. It's evening, and they get in there before sunset, and they know they're going to go to bed. But recognize also early to bed, early to rise. Uh, early morning hours, they're up and awake, and they're not thinking about staying up in a tree sleeping. You don't see, you know, these creatures doing that or be late rising. So um, they, they actually follow this principle, and, and they probably have some good melatonin and serotonin in their body. So more cortisol is released at night, and when we are awake, this should be higher in the morning and lower at night. But if you're awake during the night, you find that cortisol, this is a hormone, um, it's like epinephrine hormone or like adrenaline, that fight or flight hormone. Um, cortisol, actually, if you stay up late at night, it is increased. Um, when you, so cortisol is a hormone that helps, has a huge role in helping us deal with the senses, um, sorry, the stresses of each day. It reduces inflammation, it helps fight fatigue, um, regulates blood and sugar levels, among many other benefits. And when people go to bed late, they hurt themselves by limiting the body's ability to repair the wear and tear of the day and lessen the energy and vitality that is needed for the following day. Um, so you, you find that cortisol is quite helpful, reducing inflammation. But look at what happens when you have too much of it because you're staying up late. There is an increase in the cortisol production. Too much of that within your blood causes inflammation. It can also cause um, atherosclerosis, which is the clogging of your arteries, simply by staying up late at night. So right away you see, if you have joint pain, arthritic pain, you, you have increased inflammation in the body. Um, you have um, atherosclerosis. You have just pains everywhere, anywhere. You have autoimmune conditions. Check your time you're going to bed. Too much cortisol in the body can cause these reactions. So the heart disease, looking at cholesterol plaque build up here because of going to bed late at night or staying up through the night. Um, too much cortisol, again, would affect insulin levels in the body, and so diabetes, blood sugar levels would go up. Um, you stand a 55 to 60 percent chance of becoming diabetic. The heart rate elevates, so blood pressure is elevated. Abdominal fat increases, so you're getting this band of fat, extra fat around the belly area. It's too much cortisol. Um, and uh, that late night setup. Then weight gain is increased. You have irregular periods, fertility problems, low testosterone, acne, um, muscle aches, excessive cysts, uh, and by extension, excessive urination. It can also increase um, susceptibility to getting infections. Now, medical science explains that due to the circadian rhythm, the natural body daily clock, during sleep, several hormones are released. So you have the growth hormone, cortisol hormone, prolactin, follicle-stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormones, etc. Um, you find that um, individuals who are breastfeeding, it's good for them to go to sleep early so that they'll be able to produce enough milk for their babies. Staying up late at night is not good for the lactating mother. But what about the growth hormone? This growth hormone is important in improving the size, improving the quality, 
and efficiency of the brain. It increases the transport of amino acids from the blood to the brain, which enables the nerve cells to make important, um, to make permanent and useful learning. So these nerve cells that, that are important for um, permanent learning takes place by this growth hormone in the body, which you will get when you go to sleep on time and early enough. Growth hormone is most produced when? During sleep and when? Pre-midnight, in, in deep, during deep, peaceful, pre-midnight sleep. Pre-midnight sleep. That means you should not be up, you know, in the hours close to midnight or up all the way into midnight. You would not be able to get the, the benefit of this growth hormone that takes place only when you are um, at rest. And uh, the production of it is improved um, when you are at rest. So pre-midnight, so 10 o'clock. Good time to rest. How much sleep does an adult need on a daily basis? Well, let's look at the newborn babies. You have 16 to 20 hours for newborn. Then young children, 10 to 12 hours of rest. And adults, 7 to 8 hours of rest. Lengthen your life. Studies show that persons who get rest 7 to 8 hours each night lower their death rate than those who slept less than seven hours. Now, there's a connection with diet and rest. When we lie down at night, the stomach should have its work all done, that it as well as other portions of the body may enjoy rest. But if more food is forced upon it, the digestive organs are put in motion again to perform the same round of labor through the sleeping hours. The sleep of such is often disturbed with unpleasant dreams, and in the morning, they awake unrefreshed. So we're looking at individuals who eat these late suppers or eat late into the night. I'm going to bed. When the, the body, when you lie down at night, the stomach should have its work all done, that it as well as other portions of the body may enjoy rest. Is my stomach resting when I'm going to sleep? Why is it that I'm eating so close into bed in, in to bedtime? You, you, you need at least um, three hours with light supper meal, and that's what we would suggest, um, or more for your stomach to be at rest, for so there to be no working activity going on in your stomach while the other portions of the body are at rest. Um, and, and then, you know, you free up uh, your blood and your cells to do their work that they should during this time of rest. So if you were to eat um, close to bedtime, you find that you have unpleasant dreams, the nightmares that take place. And in the morning you wake unrefreshed. You're more fatigued. It's one way and reason why individuals do not relish breakfast by having these late night suppers. And when they do that, um, they can skip breakfast and then go all the way um, looking for snacking before it's their lunchtime. And that in itself poses some other challenges for your health. So rather than that, set your meal times. And if you're having three meals, it should, your supper should not go past 6.30 because you, um, you stop the production of melatonin in the gut. So after 6.30 and then you have the prescribed simple light foods that you can have for supper such as your fruit, dry toasted bread, um, you know, and fruits and so forth that you can have. But that must be before 6.30 p.m. Uh, that statement was taken from Councils on Health, page 118. Now, three benefits of rest. 
Rest allows your body to renew itself. Waste products are removed, repairs are effected, enzymes are replenished, and energy is restored. Rest aids in the healing of injuries, infections, stress, emotional traumas, and other assaults on the body. Rest strengthens the body's what? immune system to fight and protect and fight off disease. Now, four causes of insomnia. Insomnia is where you have problems with sleeping. So it's taking to bed your burdens, anxieties, and tensions of the day can cause you to have problems in sleeping. Overstimulation by some exciting event. Worrying over the fact that you are unable to sleep can be troubling. And eating a late, large meal before bedtime can keep the body awake and the insomnia can step in. There are some other causes. Um, drinking alcohol or stimulating beverage prior to bedtime. So um, any, you know, like the coffee, caffeine-related drinks and so forth. Not tired enough um, because of lack of physical activity or napping during the day. So some individuals say, well, I cannot sleep at night, so during the day I need to make up for it. Mm -mm. What, you have to, what you should be doing is stay up and awake during the day so your body would be so tired at night to go to sleep. Then some individuals would be overly tired and so they're restless and difficult to find rest. You know, if the room, bedroom is too warm, that can be uncomfortable and you can be so disturbed that you can't get sleep. Prolonged use of a sleeping medication, um, if, such as sleeping pills and so forth, can cause insomnia because the body becomes dependent on that drug medication rather than seeking to produce the hormones to give you restful sleep for itself. And then lack of adequate sunlight during the day can cause the insomnia at night. Uh, um, one little pointer for the sunlight and sleep is that if you have insomnia, difficulty for sleeping, put yourself out into the sunlight between the hours of 10 and 2. This even goes well for children, for babies. Uh, you know, they, if they were to get adequate amount of sunlight during the day, um, they would be tired, they'll have their hormones being produced in you know, and triggering off for them so that they're able to sleep better at night. Two remedies for troubled sleep. The best thing for promoting good sleep is physical exercise. We find that athletes and heavy labor workers have more deep sleep than other people. So it's important for you to tire yourself. If you're one that you're more at home and your body is at rest and you didn't have activity during your day, then it's kind of difficult for you to find sleep at night. But if you were, you know, to do physical activity, go for your walks, gardening, um, making friends, chatting with them, doing some, you know, things in and around the home, then you find that it's easier for you to go to sleep. Um, set a fixed time for going to bed and getting up in the morning, even on weekends, holidays. We are creatures of habit. Uh, once you have your time set, say your time for bed is 10 o'clock, then when it's evening, you look forward to that restful time, you prepare yourself, do all what you need to do, and so by 10 you would be going to bed. Um, however, if you don't such a time, then you don't have anything, any aim, any goal in which to go to sleep. Um, setting times also helps you that if you run over that, you keep beating upon yourself, oh, I'm past my bedtime, I'm past my bedtime, I need to go to sleep. And, uh, you know, it can be one of those things to motivate you to get into bed. But it's time to go to sleep and time to wake. And you said that every day. The body loves regularity. We are creatures of habit, and without even looking at your watch, you would know when it's time for bed because you begin to feel really sleepy around that time. Now, get daily sunlight exposure between 9 and 3, 10 and 2 is 
more um, perfect for some individuals and, and depending on where in the world you are located. Avoid late meals and overloaded digestive system prepares peaceful sleep. Let the final meal of the day be light and at least three hours before you retire. Avoid all alcohol and coffee, tea and other drugs. These decrease the REM sleep and may affect, may have effects long after their consumption. Coffee, when consumed, um, it stays within the blood for six hours. But then if you're using it regularly, you're actually going to be weakening your nervous system. Um, you find that not only coffee, but what's in the coffee? The caffeine. So any energy drinks, any um, supplements or drinks that has caffeine then it will have the same stimulating effect to the body and keep you awake and alert. When you talk about tea, we're looking at like green tea, black tea, white tea, chai tea, um, Lipton iced tea, Earl Grey, all of these teas rich in tannins. They're also um, are very stimulating to the body and they keep you awake. Uh, individuals who will say, well, I have problems sleeping. Do you um, use, you know, what are you on? Coffee, all these things? No, 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 no. But then they're drinking green tea and they think they don't want to declare it because it's a helpful tea. Now these things might be um, looked at as having been great in antioxidants and so forth, but that's not the only factor. They do come with this effect on the body in that it's stimulating and it can keep you awake. And that's not te true temperance. True temperance is total abstinence from that which is harmful and moderate use in that which is good. So if there's some, um, you know, harmful effect in an item, true temperance would say that's not true health. Let's leave it alone and look for other substances that would be all good. Um, uh, another point to remember in among these stimulating drinks is like um, cocoa, um, your chocolate, your Milo, Ovaltine, cocoa powder, cocoa tea. Uh, having those things um, can uh, be stimulating. It has the um, substance theobromine that is cousin to caffeine and it has the same effect on the body. So no cocoa tea at night before bedtime because it would keep you awake, among other things. Now, end the day peacefully, avoiding, avoid exciting TV programs, reading, and arguments. Observe regularity in all activities of living as far as possible. Include eating habits. Um, take a leisurely stroll, breathing deeply the pure air, and that would help to give you a calm, peaceful feeling in the body and calm you down for rest. Take a warm bath, not a hot or not cold bath before bedtime, but a warm, cooling one. The body should be cool and the bedroom should be cool, full of fresh air, as dark and quiet as possible. If noise is a factor, then wear earplugs and um, eye covers over your eyes to block out the light. Um, or you can have blackout curtains and so forth, but keep the room as dark and quiet as possible. Then another way to um, remedy for insomnia would be to relax your mind. The scrambled thoughts and worries of the day can do more in keeping people awake than anything else. Uh, pro focusing the mind on one central theme of thought is beneficial. A bedside prayer, and meditation on a text of scripture can help to give peace of mind and sweet, sweet sleep. You know, um, rest is termed to be nature's sweet restorer. Rest. And uh, it is so good to find that rest. Then do nothing in bed but sleep. No TV in the bedroom. No eating or reading in bed. Train the brain what the bed is for. And... Uh, this is for all other activities looking at, um, apart from sleeping or um, marital relations that takes place uh, in the bedroom. But that in itself um, sort of produces those hormones to make you sleep. But no 
TV in the bedroom. If TV is in the bedroom, it's not the place, definitely not the place to be. Um, you know, you lay in the bed and you're so excited and you're watching stuff. So the body doesn't recognize bed, sleep, correlation, uh-uh, they're problems. So you have insomnia, take that TV out of the room. Um, do not watch the clock if you wake during the night as it could create anxiety. Problems with inside, um, insomnia, don't be watching the clock. Set your alarm to wake you up and stay in bed sleeping until your alarm goes off. Then you have um, developed these bedtime rituals. So you change your clothes, you're warm, you have your warm bath, you have gone for your, your um, short little walk outdoors to inhale the pure air, you brush your teeth, you get into bed, and you have these routines that you would do every night so that the body sort of like remembers and it would get into that habit and think, oh, well, bedtime is coming, sleep is time. Um, do not watch the news after 9 p.m. Or I dare say even after 7 p.m. For the brain keeps awake and alert and excited about what you have listened to in the news. And so just look. You have problems with insomnia. Find, do, you know, all of these things to help you calm down and tone down. Hop tea will re induce sleep. Hop tea will induce sleep. There are some others. Um, Valerian is another that can induce sleep. Now, when, you know, you're, the stimulating effect of, of the television um, can also trigger other factors, other illnesses. Um, television also, too, has, because of their rapid scene changes, it tends to give out um, these uh, sort of flickering light formation as the scene changes. It's bright and dark, dim, bright, dark, dim. And uh, that in itself can cause epileptic seizures in some individuals. And uh, it's stimulating to the brain that can keep you awake. Um, and uh, it also creates a trans-like state in, 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 in a sort of hypnotic effect when you watch TV within after the first two to three minutes, you get so engrossed into it that what is shown doesn't um, stop for you to even evaluate and measure and whether you want to accept this information that's coming at you or not. It just goes straight to your subconscious. So watching those TV shows, um, you know, get into that brain and can really excite you before bedtime. But it's also one of those things that you have the flickering of light that can trigger epileptic seizures. And so if you're dealing with individuals who have this condition, removing the television or a computer screen where you're watching these movies and television shows and so forth, that should be switched off and not exposed to. So if you turn to your lifestyle assessment form, there are some more um, rest question topics to look at. Now, what is your usual bedtime? If someone you're working with doesn't have a bedtime, what would you recommend to them? One is that you go to bed before 10 p.m. So between the hours of 10 p.m. and 12 midnight, healing takes place in the body. And going to bed the same time seven days a week is quite important to have regularity. There are individuals who, um, you know, have autoimmune conditions, cancer, and so forth. Remembering that melatonin is a tumor suppressant, we would recommend that they go to sleep earlier so they get a whole lot more exposure to melatonin. So I'd like to tell folks with cancer, you know, go to bed by 8 p.m. And recognize that all isn't normal, you're not well, um, you need to use these laws of health for healing. Rest is a part of your medicine, quote unquote, but it's a part of what you need to engage in in order for the body to repair itself. Now, I, here's a quotation taken from uh, manuscript Release, Volume 7, page 224. I know from the testimonies given me from time to time for brain workers that sleep is far more 
with, sorry, that sleep is with far more before than after midnight. Two hours good sleep before 12 o'clock is worth more than four hours after 12 o'clock. So if you were to go to bed, say 10, the sleep actually doubles in rest quality. So it may seem just like two hours before 12, but you would have felt as if you had gotten four hours sleep, four hours rest, as compared to the four hours after midnight. So pre-midnight sleep is valuable. It's, um, it, it is worth far more than after midnight, and it doubles in rest quality. No student should form the habit of sitting up late at night to burn the midnight oil and then take the hours of day for sleep. If they have been accustomed to doing this at home, they should seek to correct their habits and go to rest at a seasonable hour and rise in the morning refreshed for the day's duty. In our schools, the light should be extinguished at half past nine. Half past nine? Seems pretty early for the student, but let's see. That's the recommended time for the lights to be turned off. If you study after 9.30 p.m., much is lost and nothing is gained. Between the hours of 10 p.m. and 12 p.m., the brain does the most work, most releasing of hormones, chemicals, melatonin, growth hormones, and the brain restores itself. So there's no time for taking in new work to be, sent, to be learning, you actually move slower um, than if it is you woke up earlier in the morning to do your study. Um, you would be more alert and sharp-minded to take on what is before you. Make it a habit to go to bed and get up at approximately the same time each day. For the greatest benefit, an optimal bedtime would be around 9 p.m. If you went to sleep 9 p.m., 10, 11, 12, three hours before midnight actually doubles in rest quality, you would feel by then as if you had gotten six hours of rest already. Insufficient sleep will cause you to feel drowsy and have poor concentration during the day. A recent study conducted at Brigham Young University proved a correlation between good GPA and a practice of early to bed, early to rise. The principle applies not only in the classroom, but in every setting. Quality sleep will help you think more clearly. A better way to practice, prepare for exams. Sleep could prove to be an important part of the strategy for preparing for challenges, such as exams. So the fact that sleep provoked slightly more plasticity, which is connections between the nerve cells, more plasticity than double the amount of exposure to experience, suggests that if you reviewed your notes thoroughly until you were tired and then slept, you would achieve as much plasticity or learning in the brain as if you'd pull an all-nighter repeating your review of the material. So, you know, reviewing your material, go to sleep, would be way more better than if you had gone through whole night just repeating the material, repeating. And um, it helps in, in giving, you know, those brain connections to concrete and give you that learning. Studies have shown that sleep loss affects learning and memory. When animals and humans are deprived of sleep, they do not perform well on memory tasks. Now, do you wake up during the night? And what can cause this? So individuals can wake up during the night. One major cause would be to urinate. Um, if it is that they drank too much too late into the night, drinking too fast and not gradually, two mouthfuls at a time every 10 minutes, will cause you to not want to pass out that liquid um, in your urine and make you take a lot of trips to the bathroom. Um, you find individuals who have prostate enlargement will be called to the bathroom quickly. 
and individuals who are diabetic and uh, they're at that stage where they have frequent urination, it can cause them to be going to the bathroom pretty regularly. Do you snack before you go to bed? How can snacking interrupt your sleep at night? Now, this can cause indigestion. Um, so I recognize that there are individuals who would complain about indigestion, acid reflux, you know, burning on the chest, burning in the throat, dry throat at night, that they would have need for water to drink. It's good to drink water when you turn during the night, fine, but not because you have a dry throat. And at one time I was in a community um, doing some programs, and as we talked to individuals, it was recognized that those who complained about this dry throat in the night, something was common among them as I talked to them. And what was common is that they were having these nice cap tea before going to bed. Like after nine, they would have some tea before going to bed. And it was so amazing to see the connection. I was, there is your problem for your um, indigestion and there is your problem for the dry throat that you're experiencing. Stop that. Use plain, simple water, and you would be fine for it. So um, another pointer about snacking before bed is that remember the stomach should be at rest when all the other organs in the body are at rest. And uh, if you were to eat after 6.30 p.m., you stop the production of melatonin, which gives restful sleep. Now, do you sleep with your lights on? How does sleeping with lights on influence your sleep? So sleeping with lights on can penetrate through the iris into the pineal gland and stop, it the, stop the production of melatonin, which gives restful sleep. Melatonin is also the body's natural antioxidant tumor suppressant. So you want to be able to have these lights off. Uh, at one time, I was working with an individual, consulting her, and this, um, we got to this point about total dark room, no lights on. She was like, as long as I could remember myself, I've always had a night light. And now she's big, grown, married, with children, grown, and she still had a night light. Um, and I said, no, you need to have it off. And I gave her the research and I showed her about what that, that night light does. Stops the production of melatonin and it cuts your, your, your sleep. It's a tumor suppressant. You have cancer. You need not be, you know, in a room with light at night. You're preventing that hormone from helping you. So she said okay, and she was determined to try it. Now this lady, we had put her on the plan with and her set her daily schedule and so forth. And so there was a time to go to sleep, a time to wake, um, time to do her exercise, prepare her meal, go have breakfast. And when I set the early hour for waking, she said, oh, I have no problem with that because I'm up anyway that time. I said okay. So two days later, I called her to check up on her, and she said she didn't do too great in her schedule. I said, what happened? She said, well, I overslept. I said, oh, okay. She said, you don't understand. I overslept, which means that I slept more than I would normally sleep. And why? Because she turned the lights off. There was no more light on the wall, night light. She turned it off. Her body was now able to kick in that melatonin, giving her restful sleep, probably making up for all the lost years 
and she was able to sleep way better than she had um, could remember in years. And uh, you know, she was so much happier for it. So make sure the lights are off, dark room when you're sleeping. Do you work the night shift or the swing shift? And how does working night shift affect your biorhythm? One is that there's too much inconsistency in the body with the wake and sleep patterns. The body keeps no track of time. So you're either a nocturnal creature or a diurnal creature. And if you work at night, you need to maintain that schedule seven days a week, even on your night off. It's a recommendation. Seems to be a tall order, but that's what you're doing to your body by hitting it with these irregular times. So a nocturnal creature, if it's dark, if it's dark and you can see clearly, then you're a night and nocturnal creature. But if it's dark and you have difficulty in seeing your hand in front of you, you're a diurnal creature. But when it comes to the shift work, it would be best if you set some regularity around that. So our advice would be that if you have to work a night shift, ask for your night shift to be consistent and not be varied. So you want to work all night. See a nurse, for example, let me work all night and then I'll go rest all day. Um, and so you have your times for resting day. You want adequate amount of hours. You want your room to be very black dark. And so you are able to sleep. You will need to use uh, vitamin D as a supplement because you're going to see very little sun. And uh, your social life is going to be all messed up, but that's just the reality of the job. And uh, you're going to have your life shortened because of so many disruptions that's going to be taking place in your body, though you're trying to create some sense of normalcy. But one of the key factors here is that even on your night off, that you maintain being awake. As you stay up and awake all through those hours that you would have been at work, and then when morning comes, you go to sleep. So that's one way in which you can get some stability, some consistency within your sleeping pattern time. Now, do you wake up early in the morning and find it difficult to go back to sleep? And what would you recommend for this? Uh, so one is to keep the lights off when you wake up to use the bathroom. Have the path clear so much that it's very little faint you know, light anywhere that you can find yourself in and out and back to your bed. Um, you find too that um, babies, if they wake up at night and you switch that light on, bam, they're alert. It's day. So they want to stay up and play when you want to sleep. So don't have any light on to, you know, they're there, they're not going to do anything or go anywhere. Keep the lights off and they'll soon fall off to sleep again. Uh, do not look at the time as it will get you anxious. You know, folks, you have, you wake up at night, set an alarm and don't wake until it goes off. Um, but don't look at the clock because you start thinking and, uh, and your brain starts working and that can keep you up and awake. Uh, so if it is that you are one, you go to sleep early and you turn and you can't go back to sleep, then sing and meditate on the Lord. Don't complain. I can't sleep, I can't sleep, I can't sleep, I can't. But I'd rather use that time to sing all the songs and hymns you know, to recite all the scripture you know, to pray and talk to the Lord. He is there. And so you can utilize that time and soon he would cuddle you off to sleep. Avoid drinking too near to bedtime, which could be a cause that you are awakened. Then do you take sleeping pills? And what would sleeping pills do to the body? So sleeping pills are addictive. They depress the central nervous system. They act as a sedative, but with a hypnotic um, kind of effect on the body. Then you have burning or tingling in the hands, the arms, the feet, the legs, changes in appetite. You may have constipation or diarrhea. 
dizziness in your head, dry mouth or throat, gas, headache, weakness. So some individuals might have all of these things, one or more, and what's causing it? Are you in meds? Sleep and pills, side effects. And so once you get off the pills, then you're able to do better. Try not to depend on the pill. Recognize it is addictive. And so it would actually stop your body from producing those hormones so that you can have sleep and rest for yourself because you're now depending on this pill to do it for you. Do you make it a practice to get to bed at a certain time and why is this important? One, we're creatures of habit. Two, regularity is important. And three, the body needs rest to heal itself and repair itself. Are you sleep deprived? Now, scientists actually um, did an experiment on 48 individuals between the ages of 21 to 38 and found that going with only six hours of sleep for two weeks was no better than going for two days with zero so according to the researchers, chronic restriction of sleep to six hours or less per night produce cognitive performance defects equivalent to up to two nights of total sleep deprivation. And that was a research that was um, published in PubMed in 2003, of March 2003. So simply getting um, six hours or less of sleep at night will produce cognitive performance defects. The brain would not coordinate uh, well, your memory wouldn't work well, and so forth. It wouldn't have the same kind of effect as if you went two nights without sleeping. Do you rest from labor at least one day per week? And how does Sabbath influence your rest? Rest at least one day a week um, gives rejuvenation, it energizes, and gives a new lease of stamina for the new week. So, um, you know, it, it's finding and, and accepting that rest that Christ has invited us to partake in. Now, the circipatan, circipatan rhythm, uh, your body is your body's weekly clock. Biorhythms that run about seven days in length. So, for example, um, if someone had a surgery, uh, you find that swelling can take place on the seventh day, on the fourteenth day, you find more swelling, more inflammation um, in the area. Then similarly, a person with a kidney transplant is more likely to reject the organ seven days later and then 14 days later after the surgery. There's decrease in inflammation in the body. On the other hand, inflammation can be reduced um, seven days later and 14 days after an anti-inflammatory treatment applied to the body. You see improvement for the better each seven day frame from the time the treatment started. And so these biorhythms uh, work well for healing um, of the body and uh, um, and so even break down. So you find that individuals, if they had a stroke, uh, you look for the first seven days to see how well they do and that would be uh, an indicator as to how well they would come around or not. Do you rest from labor at least one day per week and how does the Sabbath influence your health? Resting at least one Oh, I've gone back here. Resting at least one day a week would give rejuvenation. So there are also another factor called sight givers, and that is like time givers. The weekly, seven-day weekly cycle is described as part of God's design in creation. That cycle is described as consisting of six days of work followed by a Sabbath day of rest. Now, Zeitgebers keep our weekly rhythms synchronized by pausing one day in seven for a time of rest in order for these time givers to work. However, it must come at the same time 
each week. In other words, it is not sufficient to get one day in seven off. It is optimal to get a specific day, the same day, in seven off on a regular basis. And that was um, by Dr. Baldwin. And so to get these, this weekly cycle um, where you pause, a time for rest, they actually give back to you, um, you know, a boost, a rejuvenation of mind and body and soul. And that is what we would be looking for, that um, fee of rest that, that's been observed and, and brought on from the creation of time. Uh, from Adam and Eve, got, the seventh day was actually created for rest, created for that break uh, from the week work um, that went before. And at the end of it, you have this day of rest. Uh, it, it is such a beautiful time because you see that the body actually, um, all the activities of the week, it culminates in this, at the end of the week. I remember at one time, um, you know, the week was pretty hectic. And uh, by the Thursday evening, I was saying, oh, I just wish I could get, um, you know, one day, just one whole day to sleep and do nothing else but sleep because I was really tired. And uh, that Friday evening when it came, I went to sleep at 6.30 p.m. and slept all the way through to 6 a.m. And boy, was I rejuvenated, you know. Um, it, it was glorious. You know, there was so much radiance about me, so much energy. And, um, and you know, quite happy. I, I was no longer tired and, and needing anything more because of that restorative rest. Nature's sweet restora rest. There is a little song and a phrase in this song that tells us perfect submission, all is at rest. When we submit our all to the Lord and to his will, then we're no longer fighting with him and so we're at peace in our minds. Uh, surrendering all. So perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior, I am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. So appreciate night time, rest time. Understand too that exposures to um, blue light that you get on your screens, your um, your um, your phone, and so forth. You know those things are stimulating to the brain and factors that can keep individuals awake and uh, cause them to remain up late into the night, and they don't feel sleepy um, when the night comes. Uh, you know another thing that cortisol will do as it, you go late into the night. It releases more cortisol within the body, and so it, it gives you that sense of awakening. So you may find that, um, you know, you're up late in the night, but you're doing so much as if it's day because you have so much energy. It's not normal. It's just this extra hormone that's now within, released within your bloodstream that's keeping you awake. But rather, let's go to bed earlier um, on time. Set your time go to bed on time and benefit from that rest nightly and weekly on that one day that God has prepared for the human body. So that brings us to the end of our lecture on rest. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what we were able to study and discuss this important topic of rest. We pray that we would enter into your rest as you have invited us to do, so that we can be renewed spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, and be able to be a blessing to us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.